The precise definition of a limit at infinity is on the screen. So if we say the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is L, what we're saying here precisely is that for every given epsilon greater than zero, we can find, or there exist, a number n such that as long as x is bigger than n, f of x minus L will be less than epsilon. Remember that this absolute value of f of x minus L is referring to the distance of f of x away from that limit value L. And we're saying for any given epsilon greater than zero, if we can find an n, so if we look down here on the little graph, if we can find an n, and as long as x is out here greater than n, then our f of x's will be in this appropriate epsilon neighborhood. That's what it's going to mean to have a limit at infinity. So epsilon can get as small as we want it to, and we can still find a value n as long as the x's are past that, greater than n, then our f of x's will be within an epsilon of the limit value. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example. So what if we wanted to prove this limit? And again, when we look at this limit, we have the algebraic techniques and some rules for finding limits that we could show this because we could divide um, 7x plus 12 by x and we could use the fact that 12 over x as x grows without bound would go to zero and we would get this limit 7. So we can absolutely, we've, we have the computational techniques to show that this is true, but now we want to prove it. We want to prove it with a precise definition. So just like with our other types of limits, limits at a point rather than limits at infinity, we need to do a little bit of side work. So I come over here to the side. When we're writing proofs, a lot of times we do some side work first to get ourselves what we need and then we go into the proof and we formalize it with a proof. So in my side work, I'm gonna, in some ways, start off almost like a proof and then start with what I want to figure out what I need. So we're gonna say given epsilon greater than zero, we need to find an N such that if X is greater than N, then, and this is where I'm actually going to take what I want and use it to find what I need. What I need is this n. I need to find n. So I'm going to take f of x minus l, which let's go ahead and look at our function, uh, the, or look at our limit. The function that we're looking at is right here. So there's my f of x. We're saying it's approaching 7, that's my limit value, as x approaches infinity. So f of x, so let's go ahead and fill that in, 7x plus 12 over x minus 7. And we want that to be less than any given epsilon, okay? So again, this is what I want. This is not a proof. I just want to kind of reiterate that. This is not a proof. I am doing some side work here because in the proof, this is the goal or what I want, okay? Maybe it's better to say goal. So we're starting with what we want in the proof and we're gonna use it to find that n. Okay, <clears throat> well, let's come in here and see what we can do. Uh, I right away see that I could do a little bit of simplification. So this would actually be seven plus, divide uh, both terms in the numerator by x, seven plus 12 over x minus seven. Now that's gonna, we want that to be less than epsilon, so 12 the sevens cancel, so 12 over x is less than epsilon. And we could take the absolute value of the numerator and the denominator. Obviously, the absolute value of 12 is just 12, and then we've got the absolute value of x is less than epsilon. Now, we are letting x go to infinity if we remember up, um, at what we're looking at. So we actually do know that x is a positive quantity as we're heading towards infinity. Um, but I want to go ahead and just leave the absolute value in there. Um, as we're working um, so that we can show that it's guaranteed that it's positive. So if this is true, then it must also be true that we could, if we reciprocated both sides, the inequality would flip. So then we're going to reciprocate. Absolute value of x over 12 
will be greater than one over epsilon. So when we reciprocate like that, the inequality flips. So multiply both sides by 12, and we find that the absolute value of x greater than 12 over epsilon. Again, uh, 12 is a positive quantity, so that won't change the inequality on that set. And we end up with the absolute value of x being greater than 12 over epsilon. So remember, we are trying to find the n. Let's highlight up here again. We're trying to find the n so that when x is greater than that value, my function minus l will be less than epsilon, right? Again, starting with what we want to find what we need. But we just found what we needed. Right here, and we could kind of give this some fireworks if we wanted to, right here is we just found n. Or, or we found a bound for n is what I should say, since it's for any given epsilon. Given any epsilon, as long as I guarantee that x is bigger than 12 divided by epsilon, then my function will with, be within an epsilon of that 7. So let's go ahead and go back again here, just show what we're, we're showing right here. What we're saying right here is, again, our, we have numbers for this example. So our number here is 7, and we're saying as long as, given any epsilon, as long as we pick our n, oh, I forgot what we picked our n, 12 over epsilon, as long as we pick our n to be 12 over epsilon, then all the x values will be guaranteed, their f of x, their output values, will be guaranteed to be within one epsilon of 7. Okay, so let's now formalize the proof. I'm just trying to bring it back to a uh, visual so we can remember what we're doing here. So again, we've done the hard work at this point, now we just need to put it into an actual mathematical proof. So the side work and the proof a lot of times seem similar, but there's that difference in that we, this time, we will not assume what we want to prove, we will actually prove it. Okay, so proof, official proof. And we want to start off our proofs um, always with the formal um, statement given any epsilon greater than zero. But this time, we're not trying to find n. We know what we want to let n be. So we're going to say let n be equal to that 12 over epsilon. Let's see if I can zoom out a little. There it is at the bottom. Then, If x is greater than n, and I'm just going to rewrite, we know we have n as 12 over epsilon, but I'm just going to rewrite it right here, 12 over epsilon, our f of x minus l, which is, our f of x is that function 7x plus 12 over x, and our l, remember, was 7. Now here's the key. I'm not going to make an assumption right here. I'm not going to say that that's less than epsilon. I'm going to prove it, okay? So that's what I'm trying to prove. So I'm not going to state that there. I'm just going to continue in my uh, work here with equality and then hopefully be able to get to inequality with a less than. So I'm just going to simplify. Again, a lot of this is going to look similar to the side, side work over here, but the key difference is I'm not assuming what I'm trying to prove, right? In the, in the side work, we started with what we wanted. Okay, we're going to prove that over here in the proof. All right, so divide both sides uh, or both terms in the numerator there by x, and we get that 7 plus 12 over x minus 7, which of course is just the absolute value of 12 over x, which is... 12 over the absolute value of x. But remember here, the absolute value of x, let's get all my proof on the board, uh, where the absolute value of x is greater than 12 over epsilon, which means that 1 over the absolute value of x is less than epsilon over 12. 
So 12 over the absolute, well, I kind of want to go back up to the top, but I want to keep going down in a line. So I'm just going to bring this. That was sort of my note for how I'm going to make this next step. So 12, so going back here, 12 over the absolute value of x is equal to, by the way, 12 times 1 over the absolute value of x, which has to be less than 12 times epsilon over 12. Well, isn't that convenient? That is exactly equal to epsilon. So what we have just shown, and we have to sort of go all the way back to the top here, what we have just shown is that f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Notice here I've got equality, 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 equality. I have my little note right here, but then I go back to where I was at right there. So then equality and then less than. So we have just shown that as long as x is greater than 12 over epsilon, f of x minus l will always be less than epsilon. So we have just proven what we want to. So we can now finalize by saying therefore, again, the three dots in a proof mean therefore. So therefore, 7x plus 12 over x minus 7 is less than epsilon when the absolute value of x is greater than n, which we define to be 12 over epsilon. And we have proven, and I put this little open square here, we have proven this limit at infinity. Let's get it all on the board here if I can. It's kind of gets small because my proof got long. You know what, let's just get the proof and the limit on the board. And there we go. I just want to project one more um, definition here, and that is the precise definition at negative infinity. So we went um, on the previous um, definition that I had projected, we were going to the far right of the graph. We were going to the right-hand side of the graph as x approached positive infinity. We have a very similar precise definition at negative infinity. And on this one, what we do is we say, uh, let's suppose we have a function whose limit is L as X approaches negative infinity. That is the case if for every given epsilon greater than zero, we can find an N so that as long as X is less than N, because we're going to the left side of the graph, then our function F of X in absolute value, F of X minus L will be less than epsilon, meaning F of X will be within one epsilon of that limit value. And again, you can see right here, this time we're going to the left of the graph, so we're pushing our X's out towards uh, the far left of the graph as X approaches negative infinity. So as long as we can find an N, and if X is less than N, then our f of x values will be within the appropriate epsilon neighborhood on the y-axis.